Hey everyone, Elliot from Miles AutoCare here. Today I'm going to have to carry out a service on this customer's DS3, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you how to do a professional service and the different steps that I take to make sure this vehicle is safe. So first thing I do is go through all the exterior lights. Whilst I'm walking around the vehicle, I'll also check for blemishes and damage to the vehicle's bodywork. So we start off with the side lights, work your way to the headlights, main beams, indicators, hazards, and brake lights, reverse lights. Um, and check the brake lights and the side lights at separate times to make sure that there's no glitches with the electronics in them. Next step is to go to the inside of the vehicle. This is a three door, so what I'm going to do is check that this, these seats slide back and forth as they should. And then I'm going to check the seat belts. The best way to check the seat belts is by cl clicking them in and giving them a good yank. You don't want them to pop out of the, the clip and you also want them to snap on so uh, you don't shoot forward. So repeat that now on all the seats. Make sure all the doors open. At this stage, also check your horn and your windscreen wipers. So just squirt the fluid onto the screen and watch that your wipers clear it properly. Now I'm in the vehicle, I'm going to pump the brake pedal up as hard as I can to check the brake servo. Once that's nice and hard, I'm going to turn the ignition key on so all the lights on the dash light up. So you want to make sure your engine management lights on and everything like that is there or else you'll fail an MOT. Uh, once that's on, turn the ignition on, turn the engine on Make sure all those lights clear, make sure your pedal starts to creep down slightly, goes a little bit softer. Um, once you're happy with that, move over to your um, air, con air conditioning unit, turn that up full blast, make sure all of them work, and make sure there's no nasty smells coming from it. I'm happy with this, so I'm going to move on to the next stage. Now we're going to do our under bonnet checks, we're going to check our uh, coolant reservoir, we're going to check belts and hoses, our windscreen wash, make sure that's full. Then we're going to move over to the other side here and check our brake fluid. We want to make sure that's nice and clean, that's no contaminants in it. Let's adjust the camera down here. There's your brake fluid reservoir there. You want to check all of that. Check all your leads, connectors, never like that are one piece. There's no clay in the belt. Just check it all over, make sure there's nothing that you shouldn't see there. Check the engine mounts by rocking the engine properly. And then move on to the next part. Right, before I drain the oil, I like to take a, a note of the levels beforehand. So just check your oil now quickly um, and pay attention to what, what it is. If it's low, you could have a risk of oil leak or something like that. So you can keep an eye on it for the later part of the service. So this one here is fine. It's sat in the right place. So we can move on now. Now this is a petrol engine, so I'm going to replace the, the spark plugs here. Um, this is a three cylinder, so we're going to have to replace these three. But I'll start off with this one here, so you undo the electrical connector. So on this one here, there's individual coil packs, so you have to um, disconnect it individually. So this has got a brown clip that you push back, and then just undo it like a normal clip then. So once that clip is off, you can get your 8mm socket and take the bolt out. Uh, with that, that bolt out, just wiggle the, the coil pack loose and pull it up. Be gentle on this, you don't want to damage anything. So just gently wiggle it up until it comes out. Now it's out, you want to check it, see if it's been firing properly or see if it's been shorting out anywhere. Everything looks good. So now you want to get your spark plug socket on an extension bar. These are a bit of a... Um, specialist socket I guess because they have a little insert on the bottom that holds onto the spark plug so you just push that over and then gently and slowly crack it off and then twist it all the way out but very gently and very slowly try to do this a lot by feel if it doesn't feel right stop doing what you're doing 
and then just twist that all the way out. So there you can see it's brown on the tip. If you have a look at it, you can see different ways that it's burning. These have been burning fine, let's just do a change. So pull it out, slide your new one in on the tip. See it's nice and shiny. Now this shining coating is actually an antisease um, designed by the manufacturer, so you don't have to apply anything to this. All you have to do is just slide it in. It's a bit controversial in the mechanical world, but I decided to just slide them in as that. Some people decide to put cover slip on it, but I'm okay with these. Just make sure you spin it in by hand first because you don't want to cross thread it and uh, end up damaging the engine. As you do that by hand, just grab your ratchet, very gently do this. Now they, they're talked up to something like 25 spec, I am um, 25 newton meters. I do it by hand. And um, they've got a crush washer on it, so once you get past that crush washer and feel a bit of resistance, just stop. There, it feels good. Now repeat that on the other two cylinders, or three, or four, whatever, whatever engine you've got. This particular one's got the three. Now just slide the coil pack back in. Do the bolt back up and put the electrical connector back in. Just want to nip this up now, don't do it too tight because you don't want to crack the coil pack. And again, once you've done that, move on to the other two or whichever ones you've got, and that's how you replace your spark plug. Once you've finished up with that, I'm going to move on to the air filter here. Just adjust it so you can see it a bit better. Right, there's the air filter inside here, it's the filter housing. So it's got screws all the way around it, they're Phillips heads. So you just need a Phillips screwdriver or whatever. I'm using the ratchet here just because is easier for me, but you will use whatever you feel is best. With these now, you don't have to twist them all the way out, you just need to twist them out of the bottom bit. If you twist them all the way out, they'll have a pain to get back in. It's just so you're basically just loosening them off. So I've pulled the airbox out here so you can see what I'm doing. These are the back last two screws. So we're just going to spin this last one out here. And as you can see, they're just loose in there. They're not removed all the way. I'm going to just pull the top off. Put that to one side. You can see the old filter is in there. Not that bad, Nick. Normally at this stage you'd clean the debris out of the box, but there's none in this one. So there's the old filter. Pull that out of the way and put the new one back in. You can see that one's a bit cleaner. Then you put the lid back on and screw it back into place.
Now with all that back together, we're going to heat up the engine. Uh, just to make sure the spark plugs are working and firing as they are, since we've disturbed them, and there's no leaks coming from the airbox. And we want the oil to be nice and warm for when we need to drop it out now. While the engine's warming up, you could stop for a brake, or you can jack the car up ready to inspect the, the wheels and the brakes and suspension and, and the underneath of the vehicle. That's what I opted to do. When you jack up your vehicle, make sure you're using the right jacking points. You're using axle stands for safety so it doesn't fall on you, and you're putting them in the correct place as well, because you don't want to put it on the floor panel or something like that where it's going to rip through. So make sure you put it on something nice and solid. There are designated jacking points, and that's why I like to put them on. So that's why I'm jacking up the back now to put an axle stand under the front. So if you watch what I'm doing, then you'll know how to do it on yours. And now I want to put an axle stand on the jacking point. So what I'm going to do is just slide my jack underneath and put it on the, the subframe or something solid under here. And then jack this corner up and put a slide here, an axle stand under the jacking point on the sill then. So that way everything is, is solid and in its correct place. Now it's time to get the old oil out. I've opted to sucking it out with a dipstick with this extractor. The reason I'm doing that for is one, it's cleaner and easier, and two, it allows me to do something else whilst it's doing it. So I'm going to extract this oil now from the dipstick and take my wheels off at the same time. These wheels are stuck on, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a hit with a hammer. Try to use a soft hammer so you don't damage the wheel itself. And the same again. It looks like we're going to have to do this all the way around. Slide the, uh, the wheel then underneath the vehicle as an extra support just in case the jack stands fail. Now with these wheels off, we're going to check suspension, you're looking for a snapped spring or corrosion or anything or a leak. 
and you need to check your brakes these pads are a little bit worn in here they're going to do, do a change soon the disc there's a little bit of a lip on there but it's fine you're going to go around to this side and you're going to check the, the track rod end so just you there let's see it in there but... so there's no play in there that's nice and solid come back around to the other side the drop links are fine ball joint on the bottom is fine, the top mount up there is no play in and the wheel bearings are ok as well they repeat that on all four corners now now we're going to slide underneath spin this oil filter out, spin a new one back in top it back up with oil and then you're going to run the engine for a little bit for the, uh, the filter to, to fill up with oil and to check for any leaks. There was no leaks or anything wrong with this vehicle after the service. So we're going to sign off here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, like and subscribe. And feel free to share it with your friends. Thank you. Bye.